Hello, my marvelous Jesus. How are y'all doing tonight? Day seven of Easter week. We are done with Easter week. Tomorrow night will be a Timu haul. I've had the Timu haul for two days and I have not opened it yet. Do you know how hard that is? Oh. <laughs> for me, it's hard. So tonight, another crazy video. So I was at Walmart. Same time I bought the Legos from last night's video. And I was like, what can I get to do something with? Well, I got this. Isn't it cute? It's a peep. But that's not what's cute about it. What's cute about it is it has Play-Doh in it. But it has a little bitty bunny cookie cutter. So, I know from watching, and I can't think of her name. I'll put it in the video tomorrow night at the end of the video. And I'll, I'll let you guys know when I come back. Uh, but I watch a YouTube artist and she makes, she actually did coasters out of air dried clay. And then she painted them, painted some designs on them and stuff. And then she UV resined them, front, back, sides, everything. So, <clears throat> we're going to try it with this. But, I also have my air dried clay. So, we're going to try it with it. And we're going to make a couple bunnies and we're going to try to turn them into little necklaces. They're small enough you can turn them into little necklaces. And uh, then we're going to UV resin over the top of them. So... We're just going to open up our Play-Doh here. And we're going to get some of our air-dried clay out. And we're going to see if we can't... It smells just like real Play-Doh. Wow. Okay. I don't know how well this will work, but we're going to try it. It may not work at all. But we're going to try I know the air dry clay one will. I also have the polymer clay. I could have used it, but I just feel like I have like a little toaster oven that I use for it, and I feel like dragging it all out, hooking it up, and just for a couple little bunny earrings or bunny necklaces. So I've got my air dried clay here. I have a whole nother package of this brand new as well. For a while I was really getting into sculpt sculpting. I made my friend a statue of her dog. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I do a little bit of everything. Um, I made a, well, I started a statue of an old man. I have never finished him. Uh, he was gonna be like a wizard. Be right back, guys. Okay, guys, we're back. So, I'm gonna knead this clay just a little bit here. I'm gonna wet my hands when I do. Roll it out just a little bit, and we're going to roll it the other way. a little bit on here. I'm going to smooth out the fingerprints. And we're going to put Mr. Bunny in here. We're going to push him down.
Okay, so we got our bun in here. Pop him out. Get him out. There we go. This way. All right. Very cute. Super cute. Okay, we're going to do another one here. Light up the clay, massage it a little bit, get it going. Make sure I had a pasta, pasta machine. Like, they work really good for clay. I watch people do clay videos. Ace of Clay is one of my favorite. He does like scary, scary characters. I'm a scary movie fan. I'm sure, I told a story when I was a kid growing up. The first movie I remember seeing at the drive in was a double feature my parents took me to. I remember I was about four or five years old. I was in the back seat and I had a teddy bear that I'd won at the carnival, a big stuffed teddy bear. And I sat in the back seat and the movie, the double feature was. In Cold Blood by Truman Capote and uh, Rosemary's Baby. Well, we lived in Kansas growing up, and that's where the mo that's where In Cold Blood was based on a true story about these guys that robbed a family, thought they had a lot of money, robbed them, broke into the house, got like fourteen dollars and a clock radio, and killed the entire family. And uh, I think at that time, I don't even remember if they had already caught the guys or if they hadn't. I don't remember what the deal was, but I remember hearing my parents talking about this, and I could hear the concern in my mother's voice. And I remember that movie left such an impact on me for that reason that I was always scared of that movie. I was terrified of it. But Rosemary's Baby, I pretty much knew that wasn't a real movie, you know. I, it wasn't, I didn't hear them talking about it like it was a real story. So for that reason, scary movies never really bothered me when I was growing up because I, I knew they weren't real. But true stories bothered me. And, uh, so yeah, I was just, that's my scary movie thing. And like I said, I still love scary movies. They still don't scare me. They still don't scare me. Smoothing out any little fingerprints here, creases in the clay. Filling up the edges here a little bit. All right, now. What we doing here? My little dotting tool here. So what I'm going to do in, with the dotting tool is I'm going to kind of give them little indents for their ears. And their ears here. Okay. And then we're going to do an indent for their eyes. One for his little nose. Come down like this. Okay. So we've got one here. And then we're going to do another one now. Same thing, we're going to do an indent here for his ears. Do one for his eyes. His little nose. 
here. All right. And we're also going to take the end of our micro brush here. And right in the center. Do I want it that big? Actually, I don't think I want it that big. We're going to use the tip of our skewer here. And we're going to go right through in between his ears. And we're going to make that the hole to hang him with. Very cute. All right. Now we're going to do the same thing with the Play Doh. We're going to roll it out. And we're going to cut out a couple little bunnies out of the yellow Play Doh. Play-Doh up off the table. <laughs> there we go. Okay. And let's do one more here. Pretty fun here, guys. I've been playing with Legos and Play-Doh the past few nights. So, it don't get no funner, right? I mean, really, it don't get no funner. All right. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing we did on the other one. We're going to make some little... We're going to make a hole first for the... To hang him with. It's going to almost be earrings. It'd be a little big for earrings, so... They'd be cute. Little, they're going to be cute pendants. Alright, so we're going to use eyeball. Eyeball, nose, mouth, eyeball, eyeball, nose, and mouth. There we go. Cute, cute guys. What do you think? What do you think? You like it? Let's zoom in here and see what you think. Cute, huh? Little bitty bunnies. Little bitty air dried bunnies. And I just mix the remainder of the air dried clay with the Play Doh. We're going to see what we get doing this. I've never done this before. Maybe it'll give the Play Doh some more s substantial stability. Give it more structure. There we go. We'll give it plate over more structure. All right, let's roll it out here. Let's see what we get. Another one here. Why not? Why not? I don't want to waste the clay. I'll just make more bunnies. Make more bunnies. Why 
Why is it that I associate that phrase? Anything to do with a bunny now. For whatever reason, I can't hardly associate it with anything other than Con Air and Nicolas Cage. Okay, that didn't work. Alright, I'm going to put this in a Ziploc bag and put this away for now. We're going to let these work here, and we will be back tomorrow night, and we will maybe do some painting to them, and cover them in UV resin. So, I'll see you then, guys. Bye. Okay, guys, we're back. So, our bunnies are dry. These are not 100% dry yet. This one isn't. This one's a little drier than the other one. Um, so what we're going to do here, I'm going to do some little pastel bunnies here. Let's do a, I'm going to do a purple one that. I'm going to do a little purple bunny here. Huh. So, what I did on the outside edge of one of these, I didn't do it on the other one here because I'm going to show you guys how I did it. Um, you can sand these, but what I did around the outside edge, because I'm going to resin them anyway, but to take the little, there was like a little, where I flattened out the clay, the clay, around the outside, there was like a little lip edge. And, uh, actually, here we go, I got a little piece up here at the top that I didn't get. So what I did was I used my deburring tool, and I used it very gently. You gotta be careful with it. You can't go like crazy and like scrape really super hard. But you can use your deburring tool on this clay. To take this little edge off right here. Crazy. Got a little spot right here. All right. So that's what I did there. I'm gonna do the same thing right here. Basically taking off any extra around the bottom edge there. Like I said, you can sand it too if you want to, but I just figured I'd use this to show you guys that this is an option if you have a deburring tool for your resin. I don't do well with knives, so this is my alternative to a knife. Don't get me wrong, I have exacto knives running out my ears. But I just don't do very well with them. I tend to cut myself. <laughs> Not intentionally. But I'm just... And it's not just those. It's kitchen knives. It's all knives. I don't do well with them. Don't do well with them at all. I don't use a potato peeler because they scare me to death. I can't... I can't peel away from me for whatever reason with them. So I wanted, when I use them, I always try to peel toward me. 
which if those potato pillars, I have got my knuckles so many times with those things. So I don't do well with sharp objects, guys, just so you know. And that deburring tool has been a lifesaver with my resin. So much better. All right. So I've got them straightened up a little bit here. And we have the top of the bunny here colored in. You can go in and you can give it a second coat once it dries. It does not take it long to dry on here. Number one, they're acrylic pins. Here are my acrylic paint markers that I love. I got these paint markers from Timu. And I'm telling you now, I love these markers. Love, love, love these markers, guys. It's been one of the best purchases I've ever made. Love the brush tip acrylic marker because... If you've ever used these, these are the ones you got to shake up, and then you got to prime them, and they're just, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. They come out in big blobs. These come out perfect every time. There's no blobs. They're brush tips, so they color on. They have a little fine point here at the end, so you can get in to get some details if you want. We are doing bunnies here. All right. So. And here we're just going to do the side the same way. We do the side the same. Cute, huh? Alright. Alright, that one. And then we're gonna, instead of doing the light purple on the side of him, we're gonna do a darker purple around his side. How much darker do we want to go? I'm going to go dark. Let's go dark. Do a dark purple around the side. Cute, huh? I have a fairly busy weekend plan. I help my neighbor. Uh, she's got a bunch of plants. She's got a plant and she's got to work tomorrow. So I'm going to go over and at least try to plant them for her. Get them planted. Get them in the ground. It's supposed to rain Easter here. Um, at least that's what everybody's saying anyway. And then... help her with some stuff around her house on Sunday that she don't want to get done so that's my plans nothing major 
Everybody doesn't know, it's just me, and I have a 23-year-old autistic grandson that lives with me. He's a good kid. Very good kid. He helps me out a lot. He helps Grandma out. Alright. And let's see. Let's do... Just a little darker one. Not super dark. We can go a little bit darker green on this one. And we're just going to do his ears. Oh, train again, huh? a couple little Easter bunnies here. Cute little guys, right? Alright. I think these guys look pretty good just the way they are. Yeah, these guys look pretty good just the way they are. So, this one is kind of a turquoisey color. Get my UV resin cups here. Get my little UV resin cups here. Alright. And the resin I'm using right now is the J Diction Eco Resin Hard Type. I do have two brand new bottles that I just got, but I want to finish this off before I open another bottle. And it uh, it is of the Let's Resin UV Resin. So everybody's saying I need to try that, that it's got less odor than this. This doesn't have a huge odor, but I love how this cures, guys. This cures so good. And everybody says that the other one cures better even yet than this, so... We shall see. I am so excited to find out. Alright. So, I want to add... We're going to add some glitter here. Hear the train? Been a lot of trains the past day or two, huh? Seemed like for a while there weren't near as many. A lot of trains. A lot of trains, guys. Alright, so this is kind of a pinky purple glitter, so we're going to go over the, this bunny with it.
fresh and the pink glitter all over the top, pinky purple glitter all over the top of the purple bunny. Bringing it around here to the edge. All right. Move this resin out of the way here. Now we're going to give him a quick cure. This is our final product, product project from Easter week, guys. Tomorrow night's video will be a Temu haul, and then we are going to get into some of these molds that I've gotten. I think the first one I want to do, there's like three that I want to do back to back. First one I'm going to do is the little treasure chest. I really want to do that, and I really just want to do, I want to do an old-fashioned pirate's treasure chest. I'm going to do it in brown. I want to do the straps afterwards in gold or bronze. Uh, it's already got the hardware and stuff that comes with it. Uh, I might dry brush if there's some texture to it. I might dry brush some a little bit of black or gray on there to kind of give it a weathered look. But I just want to do an old-fashioned pirate's treasure. I was going to do a gothic one and do it in like blacks, but I I want to do a pirate one. I grew up watching pirate movies. Uh, I don't know if anybody remembers or not. I'm really dating myself here. Sinbad. You remember the old Sinbad movies, guys? Sinbad was pretty cool. But, uh, so, it was like, I kind of, kind of due to that, and then Goonies, and, of course, Pirates of the Caribbean when it came out. I love them. Love me some Pirates of the Caribbean. So, love me some pirate movies, guys. And I just kind of want to do I want to do that in a pirate theme. I really do. Just a wooden treasure chest pirate. I wouldn't mind even trying to make up some like gold and stuff to put down inside of it. Might have to find a way to make some little like. Ooh, I know. I have that one mold that has a little bitty, little bitty teeny tiny circles in it. We'll do some little circles and do them in gold. We'll make it look like little gold coins, and we'll fill them up in the treasure chest. How's that? All right. Cute. Very cute little bunny. Alright, we're going to go around here. We're going to do the side of him. We're going to do the side. We want to seal him all good. We want to seal him in real pretty. out of the way. Move these out of the way here, guys. I'll tell you what, this light has been a godsend. I really, really love it. I can't even lie. It's been a godsend, guys. Come back up here. Gonna go across the bottom and around. So I'm just taking my little silicone brush and I'm just taking this UV resin and glitter and just brushing it around. Making sure to cover everything really good. Alright. Okay, let's move 
this out of the way again. All right. later Very cute, right? Look at this. Isn't that cute? The sparkly bunny. Alright. We're going to drop him over on the back side here. And we're just going to cover his back with glitter. Because I did not paint the back. Paint the back, so he's just gonna be what he is on the back. He's gonna be a glittery bunny. So, this last one here, I was like, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, and I thought I just wanted to do something fun and silly and not stressful at all. Didn't want to have to be like, oh no, is it gonna turn out? The last two actually got pretty silly. But I like having fun. And I like trying new things. And, you know. Now you know you can put Legos in. Well, actually. I knew that ahead of time. That Legos would work in resin. Because I watched. Uh, I don't know if anybody ever watches him. There's two of them. There's Ben Works. I think is his name. And then there's Nick Zametti. And Nick did a guitar with Legos. Guitar made out of Legos in resin. He's done some cool stuff. He did one the other, the other night. Oh my gosh. It was the neatest thing. He put copper? No. Anyway, it was melted metal. And he dropped them in a pail of Orbeez. And when he pulled them out, they were these, this crazy looking sculpture 
metal thing that looked, it was really neat. It was really, really neat. He did three of them, and I liked, I ended up liking the very last one the best. He did, no, I think he did four. He colored one of them. Uh, he actually did one, he, he painted it different colors, and it was pretty, but he did this one, and it was taller, and I really liked it. But he puts everything in resin. Him, and like I said, uh, I think his name is Ben Works. Uh, I watch, watch all these, like I said, I watch so many YouTube channels, it's crazy. If people looked at my YouTube history, they would be like, what in the world is this woman doing? I watch everything from, like, these mystery stories by a guy named Mr. Bowen. Uh, I watch true stories by Kendall Ray that she tells, like, about missing and women that are missing and stuff like that, or people that are missing. Uh, I watch... Uh, Adventures with Purpose and Chaos Divers and uh, Heavy D Sparks. My husband and I used to watch their show on Discovery, I believe, wasn't it? Was it Discovery? I don't know. Uh, they had a show on where the Diesel Brothers and uh, my husband and I used to love watching that show where they beefed up diesel trucks and stuff. But now they do all kinds of fun stuff. So, but yeah, those are just a few of the channels I like to watch, which is a lot, actually. <laughs> I don't know how this is going to work. I don't think this is going to work, guys. I'm not even going to waste my resin on these, because they're not, they're not 100% cured yet, and I just don't know. This one, like I said, this one's a little more cured. Uh, I've got a little bit here. We might try brushing the front just to see what happens. We're going to brush the front of him and see. I want to switch colors for this other bunny, and I don't want to... We're going to switch colors for the other bunny, and I don't want to waste the resin here, so... We'll just try it. I don't think it's going to work. Because it's regular Play-Doh. might work better even than the other. Who knows? Has anybody put Play-Doh in resin or tried to resin over Play-Doh? There we go. I looked up resin over clay because I knew I had seen one lady do it and then I saw like, there's a lot of people that do it with the polymer clay. Like I said, I have a lot of polymer clay. I just didn't feel like dragging. I don't have a regular oven in my house. All I have in my house is an air fryer, but I have a toaster oven out here on my porch that is not plugged in, but I keep it out here so when I want to I need to put anything in the toaster oven clay wise I had it out there well I'm, I've been doing it lately so it's kind of buried on my porch and I just didn't feel like digging the toaster oven out to bake some clay so we used air dry clay and like I said I had watched a couple a couple people did it on YouTube they actually covered coasters in it and it worked just fine our coasters were gorgeous actually All right. I don't know if this is going to do anything. We'll see. See what it does here, guys. Pretty, pretty. There's the one we did. What I'm going to do is after I do this guy here, I'm going to uh, put you guys on a pause. I'm going to cure him really, really good with the UV light. With my big UV lamp. And, and we'll put it lanyard on them if they're worth putting the lanyards on. I don't know if this one's going to be or not. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think that one's going to work. I don't know. Like I said, I don't think I'm even going to waste time on those. So we're not even going to mess with that, guys. Maybe if it was 100% dry. I would think it might work a little better, but because they're not 100% cured, they're not completely dry. Air dry clay in my room, like I said, is really hot. And air dry clay cured really fast. Got hard really quick, and it's rock hard, so it's not like it's going to hurt it. But this is still 
somewhat pliable. It's hard on the outside, but see if I push in hard enough, you can see my see my imprint here. So yeah, I don't think I want to just waste the resin on that. All right. So now we have the little blue green bunny. I think we're just going to do some colored resin for this. Take a little bit of colored resin. And we are going to take Mr. Blue Green Bunny. We're going to add a little bit of blue. We're going to put some blue on him. We dropped in two drops of alcohol ink. Right. Dark blue. Kind of covering up our teal, but that's all right. I see hints of the teal underneath. fill in my hole here because we're going to use a hole to make the necklace with. Cute. All right, we're gonna cure him. All right, guys, I'm gonna put you on a pause. I'm gonna cure these guys front and back really good, and we'll be back to put on the uh, cord. Hello, my friends. We're back. All right, so our bunnies are done. Cured front and back. Cute, right? Super cute. So, just so you know, that's... It is possible. Would I do it again? Probably not. I don't know. I might do it with polymer clay. I don't know about the air-dried air clay. Uh, and it'd be alright if pro if you didn't try to do something like this. If you were just doing something simpler. Hearts, maybe. Diamonds. Just some circles. Uh, but nice to know if you want to do a project with your grandkids. I got this at Walmart. Um, it was where like all the Easter eggs and all that stuff were. And it had the Play-Doh and stuff in it. But if you get... It came with the little Easter stamp. Wherever he went. Came with a little stamp to stamp the Easter Bunny with. And if you want to do something like that with your grandkids. Here it is. You could do just regular clay or you could do polymer clay. And then you could resin it afterwards. But they could do the stamping and they could decorate their little bunnies or whatever. So I think that would be a fun project. You could also get other molds. You could, you could do some like cookie cutter molds that are like Easter eggs and chicks and stuff like that and any holidays really but it would be fun for like a little kid's birthday party maybe to have everybody stamp their own and then you go through while they're all out playing takes no time to resin them resin them and when they leave guess what they get a little necklace of their creation that they made or a bookmark or whatever you want to make i just put twine on here 
Like I said, these aren't anything that I'm doing spectacular. They were just something to play around with and see if we could do the UV resin on the clay, air-dried clay, which clearly you can, and it's hard. There's nothing. It's not, yeah, not sticky. It's everything's good and solid. So, if you guys liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, guys, so close to a thousand. I'm so close. Give it some like. Give it a share. Hope everybody has a wonderful evening. I hope everybody stays happy, healthy, safe, and blessed. Hope your resin cures hard and bubble free. Hope your crafts turn out just as beautiful. And I'll see you guys tomorrow night. Bye.